All right, so there you go. So as while I'm sharing, I'll just give a brief intro of who I am. I am Harpreet Chaudhary from um, New Delhi. I am a Google certified educator, uh, trainer and innovator. I am also a GEG, which is Google Educator Group Ludhiana uh, lead. So um, is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for the confirmation. So I am a primary school educator with the French International School of Delhi. And um, I have been here in the school for about 17 years in the teaching, as Sneha mentioned, about 21 plus years. And alongside, I have been associated with technology as my passion. And whatever I learn, I feel I should be, um, it's my turn to give it back to the community. So here I am, whatever I learn, I try to give my bit uh, here and there. As Sneha had mentioned, um, the GEG leader. So before I start on there, I'd like um, just to tell you a little two minutes. I'm sure many of you know already what is a GEG. However, um, I'd like to... Uh, emphasize on what GEGs and what role do we have as GEGs, uh, which is a Google Educator Group in our community uh, as uh, the leaders and founders of those little groups. So GEG, the Google Educator Groups, are the community of educators like you and me. We come together to learn, share ideas as we are doing now, and collaborating on using Google tools for education. So uh, these groups are basically organized by educators and supported by Google in uh, various forms. So the primary goal of GEG is to help uh, educators integrate technology, particularly the Google tools, into their teaching practices uh, to enhance learning experiences for students. Some of the key aspects I would say about uh, GEGs are their role and their role in the Google ecosystem would be community building, what we are doing now, uh, making a lot of professional development sessions. So it is both ways for me. My uh, Every time I bring up a tool, I would say it's an exchange wherein I learn each time if I'm doing a session on one tool repeatedly. Every time you may attend a session on that same tool or I may be uh, heading that session, it would always be a learning uh, for both the parties. Then uh, it, it gives us a lot of... Um, uh, platforms for collaborating, a lot of ideas, and networking is what we are doing right now. So main motto and ethos of uh, GEG is uh, to do our personal learning networking. So we are, um, it's like a web. As it expands, it further grows, and you get into a lot of um, uh, learnings and opportunities and ideas for exchange. And when you bring that in your own classroom, small little things, it, it creates wonders and just little changes or additions to your uh, classroom just gives it a little kickstart for your students. Um, again, the main role of GEGs, as the name says, it is from Google. So we advocate a lot of uh, Google tools into the uh, GEGs. So uh, it's worth noting that these specific activities and structure of GEGs can vary because we all come from different organizations, different uh, education backgrounds, different educators from different states and communities. So the working may be different. However, if you're interested in joining or learning more about the Google Educator Groups, you can check on the official website of the Google for Education website or um, explore local education communities that host the Google uh, events or the GEG events. So they are uh, commonly like mine as GG Ludhiana, you've got GG Delhi, where's GG Delhi, um, uh, NCR, you've got Mumbai, you've got all states mostly have them. So uh, anytime you want to join, these are absolutely free courses uh, one may attend. Now, uh, today's session coming to that, uh, we are working on unlocking English potential. Uh, through Google Classroom, so one of their wonderful sets. So we're going to talk about the platform, a brief about it. Uh, what are these practice sets? Uh, how we can create them for English specific uh, site? And then we're going to take up any question and answers for this. Uh, so when we are uh, talking today, we are explicitly talking about Google Classroom in our session. Uh, 
So just I'm sure many of you are already using Google Classroom for years. Some of the have lost touch because they've gone to physical classrooms and uh, they don't find it feasible. However, some of them like me, I'm sure are educators right here who would like to continue and are already continuing their uh, Google Classroom um, setups uh, as, as an addition or supplement to their learning. So a quick uptake on that, a Google Classroom is an online platform basically developed by Google as part of a suite of educational tools within their Google Workspace for Education, which is used widely in educational institutions from elementary um, schools and classes to universities. It's a tool to streamline the digital learning experience for the teachers and the students. Um, as teachers, I think it helps us create, distribute, manage assignments and foster communication with the students in a digital environment, which is a, a major necessity in uh, the 21st century as we are all talking about the digital skills. So some of the key aspects of Google Classroom when we look at is creating a class wherein it's a virtual class where you can manage assignments, announcements, any last minute information. You don't want to depend on the parents sending an email to the kids, especially when you're working with the younger lot of kids. So if they're affluent with Google Classroom already, they're working. I don't think there is a problem just sharing an announcement and the students are good to go. The classroom material is shared if you have any videos, any support st uh, stuff that you want to share with the students. It's a beautiful platform. Assignment management is you can grade it, you can electronically uh, review it, you can provide feedback within the same platform. Uh, there is beautiful drive integration again, Google Drive integration, wherein it allows teachers and students to attach and share the documents. It could be slides, it could be Google Sheets, other files from Google Drive directly. So even if they want to check something which they've done in the month of April or May, and when they have exams in December, they can always go back to this resource. They might not find their notebooks, they might not have the same information as they had in April and May, but they would have an easy access to Google Classroom where they can go back and check uh, if there was any resource that was shared by the teacher. It is also uh, integrated with Google Calendar again. So it helps the students uh, track their assignments. Even when you've got those notifications for parents, they are also in loop. So you know what are the important events related to a specific subject or a topic that's coming up, any deadlines, any due dates. Stream again works wonders for us. It is always good for, uh, it's like a central hub for all the class activities that we work on, uh, a, a good platform for communication and updates that a teacher wants to post always can be monitored and um, settings can be in such a way that uh, the teachers can always have the attachments visible or just the short um, uh, notifications that appear there. Again, uh, we are not dependent just on a drive or a device. We are uh, more um, uh, hands on with uh, any uh, mobile that you have, uh, it's accessible on mobiles through iOS or the Android system. So you don't have to depend on it. So you're always connected as teachers and students on the go always. So it's a uh, negative also. Teachers are supposed to work every time now with this. But again, we look at the positives. Collaborative features, yes, uh, students and teachers. Teachers can create assignments where students can work together as a team on Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets. Within the same platform, they don't have to go anywhere. So overall, I would say Google Classroom is a powerful tool wherein um, it has our own classroom management. But when coupled with Google Meet and Drive, you can host live sessions there. They can be recorded. It can be shared with other teachers or educators around the world. So that barrier of physical walls is no more there. And we can always use it in future if we have a recorded session. At the same time, your live session or a class is secure. You can always fix limits who can join so as to uh, uh, keep your privacy and your students uh, secure. So you all have a complete access to it. Moving on to uh, practice sets. Now, this is our agenda for today. What are practice sets? It's a very short, very crisp tool Google Classroom has provided. Uh, if you can give a thumbs up on who all are aware of, maybe people are already uh, using practice sets. Honestly, before um, uh, when it was launched, I was very apprehensive about practice sets and it was just an add on work for me. But now I feel once I started using it, I feel it is a very useful um, uh, tool for a quick 
formative assessment for me on daily basis regularly and once created i don't have to create the wheel i can just go on with already created resources i'll just show you uh, in a while so if you can just give me a quick thumbs up we'll take a pause a water break maybe so if you can give a thumbs up so i know if you people are aware so i could see about two of them so three there you go so yeah so we've got quite a less number of people if i could see the thumbs up so practice that basically um refer to assignments or activities that are designed to help students reinforce and apply the concepts they've already learned in class so as the name says practice these sets involve practicing skills they involve uh, problem solving or completing exercises to enhance understanding and mastery of the subject matter so what typically practice sets do is uh, they are created by teachers assigned to students through google classroom they are in various forms like problem solving assignments mathematical problems you have a lovely mathematical calculator within that tool we will just have a look at it uh, another 2 minutes we would be going on a live demo so just the possibilities of what practice sets can do for you you can answer questions or complete exercises related to the topics you've covered in class uh in in terms of writing you have a lot of uh, assignments that involve creative writing so there are long answers that are available you've got um, responses or reflections to in reinforce writing skills or comprehension in a particular subject that is possible through practice sets again quiz or assessment practice could be possible by distributing quizzes short for any upcoming exams like a review check instead of printing it on paper you've got interactive activities again collaboration is possible here group work or interactive tasks that students can complete online and um, lastly you've got review material like i said any time you want to distribute any study guides any review sheets rules sheet any additional resources to help students review and reinforce their learning practice sets are made for that practice sets in english specifically are used for creating assignments in various topics these sets include exercises quizzes uh understanding different grammar concepts again these are resources uh, as i am talking at the same time i would like to reiterate the fact that there are a lot of tools and skill sets which are already developed in practice sets for science and math however english they are still in the form uh, of evolving so we still have a lot of manual entry to make but they are still easy and can be handled within 5 minutes you can create a practice set very easily So here the emphasis when we talk about the practice sets is on leveraging Google Classroom features effectively to engage students and enhance their overall English teaching process which makes an easy task for teachers as well as educate uh, as students. Now many of you must be wondering uh, how different are they from Google Forms. So quick quick check when I was working on practice sets I figured out that firstly practice sets are developed by google specifically for educators and secondly it uses the ai tools to help teachers build resources quickly and that is something google forms they do not do practice sets are an assessment tool for teachers uh, where we can use it for formative assessments it is adapted for feedback for learners for our students it's something that you would use as a um, uh, supplemental uh, instruction for reteaching as i would call it for individualization and for um, practice um, your regular topics that you've taught so results as of the practice sets they are called insights we are going to have a look at it to guide your instruction so this is like formative rather than a summative activity so i would say practice sets are really um, an interesting way to go forward to it now uh these are some of the use cases you may take screenshots of it uh, of some of the use cases where practice sets are really useful so if you look at it um here we've got let me see creative uh, uh, assessments like i said you can make for conceptualizing a concept for reasoning evaluating and reflecting you can create home assignments with real time feedback given to the students there are possibilities of creating hints or uh, small little uh, uh, notes or tags that we will see again these are little note cards that you can create to give hints 
students who are very shy, not participative in class, they have an opportunity to express their answers in uh, there is a the space provided where they can uh, draw their answers, they can uh, express in a, a diagrammatic form or in mathematics, it can be for calculations. However, in English, they can explain their answer why you chose it. So that space is provided the different types of uh, topics that you can use. So which means the questions that you can frame in, in, in terms of multiple choice, the true and false, the filling the blanks, long answer, short answers. You can even import uh, already created resources like PDFs into your practice sets. It's as easy as that. Differentiated instructions, so separate practice sets for children with different requirements. There are multiple inputs. So you, if you have an iPad, you can use a stylus, a mouse, a touchpad, math or science keyboard is available for using all those formulas. That's again practice sets. You can again check uh, using the insights. Uh, that's the whole uh, table uh, representation of your class, how the students performed, which student took time, which student took two, three uh, attempts to answer the question. What is the average of each question? Which topic you have to take again uh, with the students? So those are the insights that practice set gives us. Then you've got auto grading that helps if you've already chosen your answer you don't have to correct the notebooks it is already done once one created you can have 30 40 50 students taking up the same practice set then at the same time it is sharing and collaborating with another co-teacher or a team of teachers you're working with and you can always create from scratch or reuse something that you've already created by using resources on google drive or using an existing pdf that you have so without much ado, I think I'm going to go on to our um, practice sets. So again, before uh, starting with my live demo, I would like to uh, point out that these practice sets do not work on your personal Gmails. If you have got a regular Gmail account uh, in Google Classroom, it does not work if your uh, school has a license for Google Fundamentals. So it still does not work. It works in Education Plus or a teaching learning upgrade. That's where you will be able to see the practice set. So this is my personal account. I'm going to switch on to my uh, private account. So I'm going to just go back to the meet. While I'm doing that, I'd like to share uh, with you a link of a Google Classroom. For those, I'm going to share this link. Kindly uh, open this link through your professional uh, accounts. If you have that paid version, the school is using a group teaching learning upgrade or a licensed uh, model. So you would be able to access this small practice set just to have you give a feel of how, as a student, you would take up a practice set while I'll be um, setting up the practice set classroom for you. So just have a look at that. Once you join in in the stream, there is uh, an assignment that has been given to you. So I'm going to share. So if you people are able to join the classroom, uh, kindly go on to the first assignment. That's a demo class that I had created and there is a practice set given. So I'll give you about two minutes to have a look at it. It's just a quick short practice set that has been uh, created for you. Have a go on this and we can see what it does for us. If I can get some thumbs up as to uh, if you people are able to join, unable to access the practice sets. Uh, I have a question. So, Neemam, can I have you uh, mute yourself, please? Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
again uh, these practice sets this is the demo class if anybody is able to join in perfect thank you sonia ma'am so like i said this is only for people who've got that access to teaching learning upgrade or education plus so anyways so i think i'll leave that open in case you want to try or give it a try later on so i'm going to start with uh, where to get the practice sets so first of all there are two ways to go in it once you have your google classroom this is my google classroom the one i work through so uh, if you can see this resources is something that's new so anytime google brings up something new in a tool it just shows up this new symbol so once you click on this uh it'll show you either to add practice sets it'll give me a library of practice sets that i've created and also um any videos that i can create so today we are going to only work on practice sets so here we've got new practice sets and new video activity we will just focus on a practice set these are the library of practice sets that i've created already so if you can see these are all english based practice sets so uh right here so if you want to create one this is one way you can create your practice set another way you can go is to go into your google classroom the one you want to work on i've got many of them so i just want to work on this one i'll go to my class work and i'm going to create an assignment so practice set always generates as a part of an assignment so once i hit the assignment it uh, just at the bottom where it says attach i have a possibility if it is my teaching learning upgrade or the education plus it gives me this option where it says practice set and again it says new so i can always click on that i can give this a title as um demo practice set 1 okay and i click on this so here it will be loading all my resources any library that i had it will see if there is a library that i can pull up from so again like i said there are ways i can create it like i said in my uh, theory part it says i can open the existing ones or i can create my own new from scratch so if i click on this open let's click on my phonics okay i'm going to just double click this is how a practice set actually looks like so these are this was just a sample that i had created so phonics example this is how the students if i want to try it as students so once you create from the existing one i need to edit the current one so this is an edit option wherein i can always edit once i click on it it says the question is there these are the possible answers i can get out of my students as short answers a paragraph a single select with a toggle button or a multiple select with multiple choice answers or a question so here this is where i get that i can always um, hit the more option to duplicate this sort of question i can just change and i can just if maybe i have to change the word here i don't want to redo the whole thing i can just duplicate or i can delete this question from right here this is the plus sign where i can insert the content which means adding another question here are the settings now these settings if you click on it the gear button it says allow equivalent answers or ignore capitalization which is regardless of any uh, capitals if the children make mistakes with capitals days of the week festivals any names unless it is a proper noun question because we're focusing on english so i'll just pick up small topics like that so here these are some of the possibilities if i say i want to have close to the equivalent answers i can always click both the check boxes checked and i can just save it redo and undo a right here if you want to share which means you can share it with a teacher or a set of teachers that you're working with who are part of your google workspace so you can always open that link and it 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 gets shared with them and they can always you once you share it it will be shared with them and they can open it at their end try as a student so this is an editable version if you see 
if I click on this try as a student, a new window comes up right next to it. So it opens in a new tab. And then there you can see how it will appear to your students without any editing rights. And you can always attempt it and check how it goes. So here it is loading. There is a name given to it. And we're just waiting for it to load. Do we have a question? It's just loading. It was just one question. I wonder what happened. I'm going to go back to it. I just say try as a student. While it's loading, I will just go back and come back to it. Once you're finished editing, here when you're happy with your uh, loading, you're happy with your um, view for students, you're happy with your questions, you can always go finish editing and it has an option for you to attach. So once you click on attach, it'll go back to your classroom where you want it to be attached under an assignment. wonder what happened with my internet so there you go so it is demo practice set it is assigned as phonic example and i can assign it to uh, all the students or just one student here because it's a demo i don't want to send it to my students and i just set up my regular uh, assignment with dates and time and the deadlines so that's it and as soon as i do that it is right away in my stream as demo practice, set one. Coming on to now starting it from scratch. This is how I could edit it. Now I want to start it from scratch. I'm going to go back again to the assignment, go on to my practice set right here, and I'm going to create a new one. So right here, So here, I have this new practice set. Now, the moment I hit on it, it will start from scratch. Now, to save time, I have already created some questions. So my topic I've chosen was nouns. So proper nouns, common nouns, collective nouns. So I'm going to quickly go on to nouns, grade two. So here. Now, this is my title. So the moment I do it, it titles up here. I have my first question. So I have, like I said, I've already chosen my first question. So here it is. Explain the term proper noun. Now, it would be as a short answer. I don't want full answer. I will always explain before I give it to my students what kind of expectation I have when I write. Because short answers really have a word limit. Here, I'm going to give my answer because it says enter correct. I'm in an edit mode. So the, uh, I want Google to always uh, self-correct it. So I'm going to just copy paste. Now here, if I say skills, now C suggested. Normally, if you're creating a science or a math practice set, like I had mentioned, Google has already set that bar. It's fixed up a lot of resources for the uh, lucky I would say uh, science and the math teachers. However, we still have to work hard uh, for the English bit. And Google is working on it. So we have those competencies and skills. So here, if I see suggested ones, it gives me science and scientific ones. I do not need them. So I had already given my competencies. So here, I'd like the students to be able to demonstrate what nouns are, identify different types of nouns, effectively use nouns in a sentence composition. This is just to give you an overview. Again, you can always personalize this according to each question. Any resources I want to add, there are no given resources. Again, if you're creating a science or a math assignment, a practice set, it would automatically give you some options. Here I don't have, so I look for them on this extra help. I click on this 
it says no resources yet added by default so ai is not helping us here at the moment i will either create a hint or go to a youtube video so here if i say i want a youtube i'm going to just click on nouns grade 2 so it says common and proper nouns i can be more precise as proper nouns it will still give me proper nouns i'll choose a short video which tells me common and proper nouns again i have to see the attention span of my students normally recommended not more than 4 minutes so i'm going to choose this one random just to show you i can always let it run here and i can play it however i will just add the video right here it adds up as a resource for the students now i want to go to my next question so i've already done a short answer type my next question simple i just hit question number two appears now i will take my question two which is a single select which means a toggle button which of the following is a proper noun here i'm going to change this to a single select i will just say girl holiday january and table and this time i need to select the answer so for me a proper noun would be january i will select it so my answer automatically gets selected for my students i move down further i don't want to add a skill because i've given it as general skill for the whole test i can always have different questions for different skills now the third type i have is again i have identified the abstract noun in the following sentence i will again have it as a single select let me go down right here so it is beauty out of the sentence that i have sunset breath okay so i wanted an abstract noun so here my answer is beauty i'm going to just leave it like that i have selected my answer i go to my question number four i add a new question to it now here if i want to add an abstract noun so i can always look up for a definition and add a hint i'll show you how we do that so collective noun this is a multi select answer now i'm going to go here multiple correct answers here so here i've got flock sorry flock one sec so i'm gonna say birds i'm gonna say flu i'm gonna say herd so that is my so this one and herd is my collective noun i'm gonna take that right here So here, three and four, I've done. I'm going to add another question right here on question five. So here, I'm going to take a reading comprehension again. So you can uh, always select long and short answers. So I will just copy entire text here, which is a short, really short text. It's read the paragraph and answer the question. I can have one question, two questions, three questions. I'm going to just have that. It's just processing. It's going down. Yeah. And this one is a short answer. I'm going to even have my question on the same tag. So here, what did Emily see at the museum? 
is my question and this is a short answer now she saw i don't need the whole answer because i'm looking for a short answer so she saw ancient artifacts museum had a guide who explained blah 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 so i just need answer as ancient artifacts colorful paintings and interactive exhibits so this is my answer i would expect so i will write that so there i go artifacts so there is my answer and i'm good to go now if i move on to my last part of the question so i have taken care of short i have taken care of paragraph or uh, uh, single select multi select now i'm going to go on to my paragraph so here my long answer question this is on creative writing i'm going to type here imagine you have a magical creature as a friend describe it using various types of nouns such as common proper descriptive we've all done that in our class so i'm assuming the children know them and here i write a paragraph the moment i put paragraph my space increases i have more writing ability you'll be able to mark this after the practice set has been handed in now this is something which is uh, not easily uh, corrected by ai or by computer itself or you can't have a preset because this is creative uh, of students so i will here at this point leave it and i would want to correct it and then release the scores as i would do it in any test now here my last question which would need a pdf so i'm going to go on here it says import so here i'm going to import have a look at this i have a pdf saved on my uh, drive or my device i'm going to just go import all possibilities of me sharing it from my recent document on the drive going to my drive and searching for the folder i can go on to my shared drive somebody who shared with me the starred information computers is it on my device pdf forms or so if you have a google form that's created like i said you don't have to reinvent the wheel you already have a resource you just want to bring it from a google form you can bring the questions and it takes up as uh, questions for you it creates that so i'm going to upload here it will create your it will take a screenshot so i have this document i open this document and it will create a screenshot for me and that screenshot gets converted into a question so we'll just have a look at it so a pdf is opening up for me so here it says underline three collective nouns in the passage now i'm going to here select the part i want on my question so here i select i can select two also at the same time i will import question no control no shift nothing is needed so i don't want it as question 8 i want i will just click on these six dots with this little hand i'm going to move it up right here so this is where i want my question 7 it automatically changes to 7 so you can even change the order of your questions now don't worry about this uh, left out part once it gets to the students it will be there so as a short answer i want my students to identify so here i'm going to write my question so right here it says identify two collective nouns in the passage one is given as exam example underlined in red so this is already given students have to look for more what is the required answer here i would pick up what i can see is pride that would be my answer and one let me just take it as family so here these are my two answers i am looking forward to family is already in but i'm just looking for it or i can even have a gaggle of geese so i can even change that to a gaggle of geese once this is done or i can always have pride hit tab it will give you an option if you've got multiple without a comma i have a gaggle 
of geese. So these are the two answers I'm looking forward to. Now I want to try it as a student, how it looks. But before that, I'd only added a video. I want to add a resource as a hint for my students as to what is a noun. Let's say just a random one. Noun, nouns are uh, names of people, places, animals or things. I can pick up a definition from Google. I can pick up uh, collective nouns, demonstrative nouns, descriptive nouns, uh, abstract nouns. I can give all that note cards for them and I just save it. So it saves as a resource. Now I want to try it as a student. So let's look at it. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't give an answer. This one, the last one, number eight. I don't want that. So I'm going to just delete right here. And now I'm, I think, good to go. So if you've not marked an answer, Google will always prompt you that you've not done it. Do you want to still continue? OK, so here it is. OK. So we are looking at the uh, view as a student. I hope this opens now. It's loading my practice set. So we've seen all five or four kinds of questions. We've seen the fifth one as an upload that we can import from outside the classroom using our drive or our device. We have also seen how um, we can add a clue card or a cue card for them, a hint. And we can add videos, again, uh, using YouTube, which is integrated into Classroom. So, a uh, lot of skills when you're using them um, are already given. Otherwise, you can just uh, take up your competencies by each question. I don't know why it's not loading as my practice set for students. There. So here, explain the term proper noun. So once I have this question, here, I can always try that before I give it to my students to see how it, it would look. So here, this is a short answer type question. It says, show your work. Then it is, uh, what's a collective noun in the phase? So here, it is a multiple choice question. So let me quickly check how you, the students would write it as names of people, places, things. If I hit on check. OK, now here you have to be very precise as to what answers you're giving. So if the student has attempted wrong, you will ask the student to try again. Here is what I was talking about, showing your work. Now, this is more useful when you're talking about science or math. However, sometimes students want to give an elaborate explanation of why they chose this answer. So here, once you click on this, you have a pen that you can select from. So here, select your pencil, and it gives you a board to write. Here, you can choose the color of your pencil. So I can have a red. So anything you can write here, you can even erase. So just click on the eraser and you have this. It can be a bigger full screen whiteboard. You it can always minimize your work and you can go back to it. So this is your view work and it doesn't get erased. It doesn't, it automatically gets saved. So the kids can always, I will go back to my uh, pointer and it, it comes back to my hand that I can check. I can always try again and it works right here. Then it says, uh, if I go down further, what is a collective noun? So here I have in the sentence flock and herd. If I want to check, it will check for me. And if it's correct, it will give me a green check. Let me check something. 
So here, proper noun, it's January. I'm going to again hit a single toggle. And it is check, done. Here it's beauty, it's done, check. And here is my paragraph. I have just these things that I can copy, paste, or write. It will be done. And here is my descriptive writing. I have a paragraph that I can write, imagining yourself as a, a magical creature. Here it automatically says teachers need to check. So it will be uh, checked, and then the scores will be released. Now, like I had mentioned, the text is right here in full. So we always have an option of choosing the answer, what we wanted, and it will appear for us as students. Now, if you see on the left, uh, right side, there was always this extra help tab. At any point you are stuck, it will show you or prompt you that there is some extra help. Now, what kind of help is it? There is an extra help in the terms of a cue card that appears. So nouns of names, nouns are names of people, places, animals, or things. Like I said, I can have multiple cue cards for them to review before they're taking the test or uh, the practice set. I can click on the video that the teacher has given me, and I can always play that video within the practice set. I don't have to go open an extra tab, and it just appears like that. So that's how practice sets work for us with different uh, cue hints for the students. There's no problem with the video. It's just internet. So that's how the videos work. Now, if I go back, since I am happy with this, I'm going to go back and I click on finish editing. It'll ask me to attach like I did the previous time when I edited the one. So again, I can share it. I can try it. I did try as a student. I can re-edit it if I don't like something which I thought was a problem. And I will click on attach. Now it will create an assignment for me. Nouns grade two automatically takes up as the title. I can write a message for my students. It is there. I can uh, create a due date for them. And here uh, I can create a due date as 26th. And I will click on here. Again, giving it to one student. And we are good to go. I click on assign. And there it is. Now, where do I check where I go to my marks? So that I can see my insights. So I click on this or I can even go to my stream to check. So here is my nouns. I have given it to one child. I can similarly see my stream. This is my assignment that I had created. And now here is what it says as classroom insights. Now, if you look at it, I click on this. This is just one student. So here one student has been assigned who's not attempted. As I click on classroom insights, it is opening up. So it will basically give me, while it's opening, we just use it as talking time. So while it gives me insights, I will have multiple students right here. There's only one child right now. I will have multiple students. How they've attempted, I can manually score them and give them because there was one question where the teacher had to uh, mark it, the long answer question. So if it is just a quiz, you can always put it and it's just 10 on 10 or 5 on 10 if 5 are correct. There is no right and wrong. Again, it's not an assessment. It's a practice set. So the teachers, uh, students need to create that comfort for themselves. It says open folder for assignment. It will go onto my Google Drive. I can always see where it is placed on my drive. So it's an error on my internet. So here, this is my insight. It's still loading. So here I can see what students, the number of questions, each time the question was attempted and re-attempted, how many times? So as a class, I can see if 10 people have taken up the practice set, five of them were struggling with one specific question, and I can pick up a topic 
on my own at home and it doesn't take long to assess you can just visually see it's so visual you can see with the uh, good colors that it shows the reds the greens the attempts so you will see just right away that these were the questions these were the problems so these are the students these were the grades and then what score did they get here if i click on insights right now since nobody's attempted so this is your go to window wherein you can show them what's the red and the greens and how many people have attempted how many people have not got the concept and you can always bring that so this is a uh, google insights where you look at it so um i think we are pretty much covered with practice sets we've seen how you've created all the tools on practice sets mm, i don't think i'm missing on anything if i look at the slide deck so here we we've looked at all these creating recreating so these are some of the steps we looked at going to the assignment creating on practice sets you've always got the create button you've got uh, the different four possibilities we saw that we selected our single type question so like i said in maths you already have the skills if you type a question the skills are already there you can just choose them in english they are still working on it so there are no resources right now when there aren't any the bulb will be turned off if there is something in science or math if you are a primary teacher and you work across all subjects this is really helpful for you and these are some things ai helps you with so i think english teachers have to work on their own repeatedly i would say that finished editing so here we we did that we tried as a student we attached it to our google classroom and now if you have any questions feel free to ask i think we are done with our practice sets sneha ma'am yes ma'am so i am i'm good to go any question so far i was not able to get on to the chat if you have any questions for me anybody who wants to ask anything uh, we can always compliment google because it was a wonderful tool when i did not use it before i said it's very difficult what to do why to do it because when you have google forms like i said the comparison was pretty easy that this is totally educator specific education specific to our classroom so uh that that's the objective of it so it did work for us so i think we can always give a thumbs up to google for always listening to the teachers and making their life easy uh sneha ma'am will be sharing uh, the feedback form with you all so please fill up the form uh, and you would get your um, certificates in your email in some time again like sonia ma'am said in the beginning of the session please register for the upcoming sessions they are all tips and tricks and little bits and pieces of google new tools or already existing tools you'll always have new ideas that you might take up i hope i was able to give you some insight on how to create a lesson with different uh, options available on uh, practice sets uh, on one topic so i i picked up an easy one which was common for everyone again it can be tapered Uh, accordingly for secondary classes higher grades or you can pick up uh, poetry you can keep uh, pick up uh, conceptualization uh, concepts visualization activities and all that in english so the limit is endless you just have to be creative and i'm sure all teachers are and um, if you want to connect with me uh, please do join in my gg ludhiana youtube channel that's it's a lovely resource hub so we do have sessions and uh, do check out other gegs it's a lovely educator community that we can get connected and get uh, updated on on daily basis so i am on for any questions that you may have sabko samajh aa gaya right i understand i think um you were great arpri thank you so much for your time today and for taking us thank through you, um you know what practice set and how practice set can be used in a language i think um, you know we've had sessions on science and maths but this was like a uh, like an interesting take on um, you know how languages would fit in so thank you for that and uh, like i preach said please fill in the feedback form uh, to get your certificates and also uh, you know to reach out to us if you have any queries or uh, if you have any suggestions for the upcoming sessions 
if there's anything particular you would like to be trained on please do mention that in the forms and we would uh, definitely consider that for the upcoming sessions uh, and uh, thank you everybody for being here thank you uh, to our PD partner for uh, arranging this session. And like I've said, Harpreet for the wonderful session that she's conducted. And thank you everybody for uh, taking out time on a Friday evening and being here with us. Hope to see you in the future sessions of the series as well. Thank you and have a lovely evening ahead. Bye-bye everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining.